So this is Bitwig, the latest digital audio workstation to hit the market. As I'm sure most of you know, it's been in development for several years and highly anticipated since its first announcement. I was actually lucky enough to be a very small part of that development, so I can assure you it's been well worth the wait. So this is the arrangement section, much like any other door out there, with the timeline going from left to right and the transport bar buttons like play, stop, record, etc. along the top of the screen here, with DSP and CPU meters here, and all of the editing tools over here. By pressing the tab button on my keyboard, I'm given a new screen similar to the session view in Ableton Live, where I can build clips to develop a track idea without thinking about the arrangement just yet. And then once you've got a decent groove going, you can then start to arrange the clips out in the arrangement section. You can drag an audio file or loop into any clip here in an audio channel, or double click in an instrument channel to insert a new MIDI clip like this. To the bottom right hand side of the clips view screen, you can see these six orange or white buttons depending on whether they're enabled or not. The first one is to show or hide the clip launcher like this. Then there are big meters here. Or you can view the device chain here for seeing VSTs and effects. You can also show or hide the send return gain dials, the input and output routing, and the send tracks themselves. Down at the bottom left hand side of the main window you can then access more show and hide buttons for the overall layout of Bitwig with the arrange button here, the mix window here and the edit window here for editing MIDI or audio. Then next to these are the editor panels where you can see things like the automation window for editing the detail of audio or MIDI depending on what you've actually highlighted at the time. You can also access these through keyboard shortcuts, so it's E for edit, D for devices and A for automation. If I go to the arrangement screen now, you'll see even more of these buttons at the bottom left of the arrangement section, offering you the chance to show or hide the clip launcher inside the view like this, which is pretty cool. And you can even show or hide the arrangement part like this. Along with input and output view. And send channels view. And then finally you can double or half the size of the channels here, which is handy for when you're working on a laptop. On the far right hand side of the screen is where you'll find the browser. Along the top of the browser you'll see icons for categories like devices, samples, multi-samples, music, clips and files, and then a configuration button to add new locations. If I click on the samples tab now, you can see I've already added my sample library here using the configuration button I mentioned earlier. So showing the subfolders using the arrow here like this, I can then browse through them like this. You'll notice if I click on any one of these folders, all the available contents of that folder will be shown in the window below here. At the bottom of all of this, I can change the preview gain, activate the auto preview, and next to that is the auto synchronize so that I can preview the loop while I'm playing my track. On the opposite side to the browser, you'll find the information bar. When I highlight an audio clip, I can change all the settings like the color, the length, or even duplicate it and bounce it or reverse it. Uh, below that is the audio event information section, where I can change settings like the stretch mode here. And with the stretch mode, you can choose between raw, stretch, stretch HD, and repitch. When I highlight a MIDI clip like this, you then get the equivalent parameters like key, velocity, pan, pitch, and quantize. Looking at the audio effects folder in the browser, you can see Bitwig have actually given us plenty of effects, including a bit shaper, blur tool, chorus, comb, compressor, delay one and two, distortion, dynamics, EQ two, five and DJ, filter, flanger, frequency shifter, gate, ladder, 
Peak Limiter, Resonator Bank, Reverb, Ring Mod, Rotary, Tool, Transient Control, and Tremolo. If I highlight the track channel I've called NL3 here, you can see in the Devices panel I've started with an instance of Silent 1. And notice Bitwig will show you all the available parameters of Silent 1 along here. And any of these can be assigned to macro dials. I've actually assigned one of the Bitwig macro dials here to the filter cutoff of Silent 1 and then placed a mid-side tool after that in the chain. Then by clicking the side button here, I've made a chain of effects which will only affect the side signals of that channel. What I've done is cut some of the low end and lift some of the high frequencies using an equaliser, and then I've put in a dynamics tool to do some upwards compression here, which is essentially like a backwards compressor making the quiet bits louder so that the overall sound has more sparkle and width in the higher frequencies. Then finally I've used an LFO tool which is controlling an amplitude tool to create what sounds like a sidechain compression. If I go to a section over here where the filter is open and the sidechain is off, I'll play it for you now while switching the mid-side effects chain on and off to show you what difference it makes. Some of the effects tools available in Bitwig are really amazing like this and offer so much flexibility. Even if I load up the preferences pane now, you can see there's some really clever stuff like being able to set the default new track gain to minus 10 dB and even using K20 metering down here so that you can really get the best out of your mixes and masters using external analog gear or even analog emulation VSTs that need a much lower input signal before they start to saturate. This is the first door I've ever known to offer this kind of vital feature, which instantly places it steps ahead of the rest. The way Bitwig has been built from the ground up with producers in mind means that the audio engine is completely separate to the overall interface of the software too. This means I can open more than one project at a time, and then just activate the audio engine up here to the top left, on whichever project I want to play. Not only does this allow me to have multiple projects open, but it actually means that when something causes the audio engine to crash, you can just hit that button to reactivate it without the entire program crashing and losing any unsaved work. Let's face it, no software in the world is completely crash-proof, so Bitwig have really thought about this. In fact, they've even made it so that every time you load a VST, it's actually loading in its own sandbox, so that if the VST crashes, it just collapses inside Bitwig without crashing the entire system. So looking at this track I have here, let's say I want to automate a comb filter on the bass bus channel. All I do is head to the browser and look for the comb in audio effects devices. Then I just drag it onto the channel like this. Now I can press the letter A on my keyboard and then I'm in the automation editing window. Now I can use the drop down menu here and choose what I want to automate. So let's find the filter frequency on the comb like this and then give it some automation. Now I can also do this from the arrangement screen by pressing this button here and using the drop down box, so let's find the comb mix levels here and then automate that too. And now it should sound like this. So that's the basic overview for Bitwig Studio. It's got some stunning effects and tools, and it's been amazingly thought about from the ground up. And there are loads more amazing features in the package, and even more coming later this year too. So watch this space. Cheers.